I've been thinking about leather recently. I think it started when Liz asked for a vegan leather jacket for her birthday. I've been vegan for almost five years and I still don't know what vegan leather is. And then the second thing that happened is that we went to this event in Soho. It was a pop-up deal hosted by a biotechnology company called Modern Meadow. I was pretty excited about this because I'd been following Modern Meadow for a while, tracking their progress in making biofabricated leather. That's leather that's grown in a laboratory, no animals required. After five years in development, Modern Meadow was sharing their first prototype with the public. They call it ZOA. For anyone like me who's interested in a more sustainable future, free of animal products, this was kind of a big deal. People have been using leather for thousands of years. It's very durable and functional, and it makes cool sounds in movies. Check that crinkle. I've got these leather boots that I bought before I went vegan, and in the winter I still wear them pretty much every day, so I understand why leather is appealing, but I also get that leather comes with a lot of baggage too. Most leather is made from cows. Now our relationship with cows has changed over the years. It used to be that we'd give them food and protection from predators and they would give us food and clothing and free labor. They ate grass and their poop fertilized the fields for the next generation of cows to eat. It was harmonious and balanced and that's how it worked for a long time. And then this happened. And this turned into this. Growing all of these cows that we have on the planet now consumes a massive amount of resources. We're talking millions of pounds of grain, millions of gallons of water to grow that grain. We're cutting down the rainforest to make room for the cows and to make room for the crops that we feed to the cows. Their methane farts are a major contributor to greenhouse gases, and they produce so much urine and feces, we have to store it in these massive lagoons that leak into our water. <coughs> You weren't gonna drink this, were you, Bert? So cows are bad for the environment, we get that. But somebody could say, well, isn't leather a byproduct of the meat industry? So as long as people are gonna eat beef, we might as well use their skins as well, right? It would be wasteful not to. That's a fair point. But consider this. The skin itself is not leather, it's rawhide. And like any organic material, it'll degrade over time. So a long time ago, people figured out that you can preserve it by treating it with animal fats or tannin from tree bark. That's why it's called tanning. Today, tanning is done with toxic chemicals, the most common being chromium sulfate. A lot of it happens in poor countries with no regulations. Workers exposed to this stuff every day get sick, they get cancer, they go blind. It's a dark situation. And the leftover chemicals are dumped into the water supply, affecting the entire community. This tanning issue speaks to a general lack of accountability when it comes to any product traded on the global market. When you buy leather, you might not even know what kind of animal you're getting. The number one exporter of leather is China. And do you know what else China farms besides cows? Yeah, and they can mislabel dog leather as sheepskin and sell it to customers in the West. That's not true. That's impossible. Okay, so what about Faux leather, AKA pleather, and vegan leather. Well, these are known as synthetics, and synthetics are cheaper and more customizable than natural leather, and these days they can easily pass for the real thing. Like this vegan leather jacket I got for Liz. Pretty slick, right? No rainforest destroyed, no animals killed, no massive poop lagoons. It's pretty cool. So what's the catch? The problem is that synthetics are made from plastic. And plastic is made from petrochemicals that we have to pull out of the ground. The process of extracting and transporting and refining this stuff is really making the planet sick. Sometimes it's subtle and sometimes it's right in our face. Well, that's legitimately disappointing. What would really be nice is a leather that looks and feels real, but doesn't come with all the terrible downsides. And that's where Modern Meadow comes in. Modern Meadow was founded five years ago with the mission of producing the world's first commercial bio leather. Their team includes biologists, engineers, and designers. 
a truly Da Vincian combination of the arts and sciences. What if, instead of starting with a complex and sentient animal, we started with what the tissues are made of, the basic unit of life, the cell? Modern Meadow grows bioleather in their New Jersey laboratory. They start by altering the DNA of yeast cells to instruct it to grow collagen. Collagen is the main structural protein of animal skin. It's exactly like computer programming. So instead of ones and zeros, we use A, T, C, and G. Make collagen <laughs> instead of alcohol. And because we make this material, we grow this leather from the ground up, we can control its properties in very interesting ways. Here it's being used to gather and spread pleats. Mm -hmm. So the leather itself is acting as a design element in this piece. This has both that traditional leather grain mm -hmm. and this hexagonal completely controlled grain. This shows it on a sport mesh, so you might imagine like what are the performance sport applications of putting leather on a mesh. This is a pitcher of white leather and a pitcher of black leather that have been poured together to marble. So it's not painted, it's two types of leather. Yeah. Imagine that on a couch, mm -hmm. right? Like what a beautiful, like that would be like a Palomino pony, which yeah. you know, we don't want to turn that into a couch, but we can with this, yes. so. <laughs> so what kind of impact will Modern Meadows bio leather have on the environment? It's still too early to say. However, since farming is not required, their consumption of water, energy, and land will likely be a lot less than traditional leather production. They still use chromium to do the tanning, but they claim it's a lot less impactful on the environment because they don't have to do the beam house operation, which is the part where you strip away the fat and the hair from the skin. Tanning is an art form, and we're learning from some of the best tanners in the world about what we can do, because for us to invent the whole tanning process would be reinventing the wheel. Yeah. So we can do a lot in just the last stage. So big question, when are we going to be able to buy this? Within five years, we're hoping that people can walk into a store and see a shoe or a handbag or a product and go, do you have it in SOA? Okay, so how long till Liz gets a leather jacket made from these? <laughs> now they've obviously got some big questions to answer, like are they gonna be able to scale up efficiently? How much will it cost? Will it be affordable? So time will tell. But for me, I'm pretty excited about this, you guys. I think it's really cool. I mean, we're living in a time where people are growing leather in a laboratory in New Jersey. The future. Unbelievable. If you don't want to wait for a truly green leather, you do have options. Right now, you can buy a belt made out of cork, uh, shoes made from pineapple leaves, a mushroom purse, and a dress made out of grape skins. We'd love to go deeper into this kind of stuff in a different video, maybe do some reviews. So if you guys have any recommendations, please let us know. Also, what do you think about Modern Meadow? What do you think about bio leather? Is it cool? Is it creepy? Would you wear it? What would you want to do with it? What kind of custom weird bio leather would you make? Are you watching this from the future and wearing bio leather pants? What's the future like? Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll be back in New York with Liz in just a few days. We've got a bunch of fun videos coming up, and we love you, and can't wait to see you next time. Bye. Even Da Vinci said nature is the greatest inventor, and no one can surpass her. So we are not trying to replicate nature, because A, we know we can't, um, and, but what we do have now is we have the ability to play with the same toolbox that she has. Mm -hmm. So our goal here isn't to mimic leather, it is to use the same building blocks of leather, which is collagen proteins, and innovate with that.